Hi, it's Jerry with Taitland Studio. Welcome back to another episode. And in today's video, I'm going to be building a 10 foot by 50 inch ash dining table. Uh, well, it's actually being used as a conference table. So here I'm starting off rough cutting the leg pieces to length. Now the style of the legs is a V shape that's uh, connected to a stretcher, but later in the video, you'll be able to see what it looks like. Now I'm just starting off with doing all the milling on these pieces. Now this particular piece was pretty warped, so I had to spend quite a bit of time just running it through the jointer. You can see as I'm pushing it through on the bed that it does have quite a gap. It takes quite a few uh, passes here, but eventually I do get it flat on the one face. And um, I just uh, eventually do the, um, the edge, but uh, like I said, I had quite a few passes here, so I'll just pull that uh, adjuster over and uh, run it on the edge. Now, um, after that, I do take it over to the planer and I'm just adjusting the depth there, of cut, depth of cut there. Now what I'll do is because I want them all the same thickness is I'll run one board at a time and then once I do that initial thickness then I'll lower the cutter head a bit more and then do all the boards so it has a nice consistent width or sorry, a consistent thickness. Now here I'm just taking off the other edge, just cleaning it up and uh, now, just set it to the side there. So, once I've got all those leg pieces done, um, I'm just uh, gluing them up here. Now, this customer is going to be putting it inside of a commercial building, and the floor was a bit uneven, so um, I did have to make these legs a little bit uh, shorter so that we can put some adjustable feet in there just so when uh, people would be sitting at that conference table, it wouldn't be wobbling back and forth. We've all experienced that, and that's certainly not enjoyable. But uh, I just add you know, quite a bit of glue here and uh, just kind of smear it around, and that, that's what, exactly why I have baby wipes at the ready there. It uh, just helps clean it up. Now, typically with these shorter lengths, I don't bother using uh, biscuits to keep it lined up but I did have to readjust the clamps a little bit because those pieces did kind of slip up and down a little bit and you can see I'm tightening and just trying to push it down and I kind of back it off and readjust it and just trying to getting just trying to get it so that those legs line up really well and uh, I find if I do that, uh, if it's not even, you're gonna be spending a lot of time, well, I'll be spending a lot of time sanding, just making that smooth. But again, I'm just you know, cleaning up the goose glue squeeze out so I don't have to sand that out later on both the upper side and the lower side there. Now there is four pieces like this that I glue up, but I'm just showing you the video for the first one. And uh, once I do uh, glue up those pieces, I do put them in a V-shape. Now, unfortunately, I lost the footage on that, but um, I am just sanding it down now and uh, just kind of slowly going back and forth. Now, I do start out at a pretty aggressive grit here, so I have 80 grit in my sander. and. Uh, so you can see that hose and the cord for the sander does kind of go up overhead. So just off on the right there a little bit, you can see that I have a two by four going straight up. So I have an overarm dust collector and I find that makes the sanding process a lot easier because it just keeps that hose up out of the way and it doesn't get caught on things quite as much as if it did if it was going down below. Uh, another thing that it prevents is uh, sort of swirl marks if uh, the sander accidentally tips. So I don't have those little you know swirl marks or pigtails that you sometimes see in tables. And after I sand it up I do bring it over to my uh, miter sled here. Now I think it was at the maximum capability. You can see it's kind of wobbling quite a bit there but once I get that cut started, it's not too bad. And 
I just sort of pull it out. Yeah, you can see it was at the maximum capability. So in hindsight, probably would have been better to use a uh, circular saw to cut that off or a track saw. But yeah, the other side, I just go over, uh, use a table saw again, but push it up against the fence. So it's a much safer and easier cut. So I am just gluing up the V here. And now I did think, I thought I lost the footage, but I guess I didn't. Um, I lost the footage of the stretchers being glued to the legs, but the legs are just a V shape there. So I just um, line up that board as close as possible. Now I do um, just kind of that upper vertical piece, I just kind of make it just about a sixteenth of an inch less than that lower piece so I can take a router over later and remove that little bit, just a flush trim bit. But um, yeah, that inside I use a, a toothbrush and then some uh, baby wipes just to clean that out because I find if I spend the extra time here and now it saves me a lot of time later trying to get into those nooks and crevices to sand them out. So finally I'm moving up to the uh, tabletop now. These are 10 foot boards so I am struggling quite a bit uh, with getting them through. I mean this is a nice and wide joint or planer but the bed is only you know maybe two and a half feet or two feet each way and you can see the dust hose that falls out and uh, I'm struggling pushing it down here to keep it flush on the bed and yeah th this was this was a, a frustrating uh, board thing. I think I got so annoyed that I, I didn't record anymore and I just didn't even record me running the boards through the planer but <laughs> I do uh, am doing the biscuit joining here and uh, I finally got all those uh, uh, biscuits cut uh, uh, sorry slotted in. And uh, I find that really helps keeping these boards uh, straight when you are doing the glue up. So, but yeah, I just add lots of glue here and just sort of brush it in. And as I was going along, I was originally gonna glue up all those boards, but I sort of decided after the fact, as I was brushing out all that glue that I thought, you know, this glue might be starting to dry. So I did glue up half of the tabletop initially and then uh, the second time around, I glued up the other side and then I did the final glue up. So now it's just, I do just show the, um, the three boards here, but um, yeah, just putting in all those biscuits. And I find that I do need to put in the biscuits um, after I've applied the glue, because if you put in those biscuits first, and then apply the glue. What happens is that that moisture in the glue will expand those biscuits a bit. So when you are pushing those boards are to get all together, it does. It, it's a little bit difficult to get them in. So you kind of have to fight pushing them in. But yeah, those other boards, I just sort of take them off to the side, and then I'm starting the glue up, and I just got them. You know, just the two clamps and. Just having to get a mallet there and just sort of bang them in a little bit and just get everything lined up well. And here I'm just fighting, finally adding the other clamps. And um, yeah, this was definitely the uh, uh, stretching the limits of the size of tables I can do, not only with the joint or planer, but uh, my clamps. I think they go up to 51 inches. So I yeah had a 50 inch tabletop and uh, it was certainly the, the limits of working out of my garage. But um, yeah, after I finally did the big glue up on that, I was able to take them out and uh, just sanding the top now. And sanding the top probably took a couple hours. And uh, there's Toby the shop dog giving me, uh, keeping me company while I'm doing that. But um, yeah, eventually I just uh, use a track saw and uh, cut the end. but. That's pretty much all the video footage I have because like I said, I lost a bunch of footage. I'm not quite sure what happened, but I did take some pictures. So you can see here the legs, how they're attached. There's that stretcher that attaches those legs. Now when I do make um, 
table legs. I like to make them two thirds of the size of the tabletop just so that you can still have a lot, plenty of leg room, but you um, won't have a tippy table. So yeah, here's the table after I delivered it to the customer and uh, he was really happy and uh, it's a beautiful conference table, but that's pretty much the video. But you guys, uh, thanks for watching and uh, please like, share, subscribe and uh, keep your eyes posted for the next upcoming videos. Have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye.